Okay guys, the second uh, passage in the text that we're going to be reading about is another New England colony, and this one is actually Rhode Island. Now, when we're learning about the New England colonies, we're not actually going to be looking at every single one of them, but many of them shared similar traits to one another. And so today as you're reading New e or today as you're reading about Rhode Island, I want you to be thinking about how it's similar to the one that we just read about with Massachusetts. And so um, think about how it's similar and different to one another because they're in the same region. And so they're going to share some similar attributes, but then they're also going to be different in some ways as well. Okay. Um, we're going to start off by um, reading a little bit about Rhode Island and understanding some of the things that made some characteristics of that colony. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get started. It said Rhode Island was founded so that people could freely practice different religions. In 1635, a young minister named Roger Williams, he ran into trouble for criticizing the government of Massachusetts. So unlike the colony's Puritan leaders, William, he believed that government and religion should be kept separate. And so eventually he was forced to leave Massachusetts. If you guys remember from what we had read in our previous text, um, Massachusetts was founded for religious purposes and those people had left England. They were the Puritans. Well, since Williams had different beliefs than the people of Massachusetts, he was asked to leave Massachusetts. So that's basically kind of how Rhode Island was founded. For all the people that needed, that had to leave Massachusetts because they didn't get along with them, they had different beliefs, they thought that government and religion should be kept separate, they were forced to leave Massachusetts and go form their their own colony in Rhode Island. It says, William spent the winter with a group of Native Americans. In 1636, he started a town called Providence. This town became the capital of New England colony of Rhode Island. Two years later, another preacher, Anne Hutchinson, she spoke out against the Puritan beliefs. She too was forced to leave Massachusetts and she moved to Rhode Island. In time, the colony became known as the place where people with different religious beliefs were welcome. And here you can see a picture of Anne Hutchinson, and the caption says, Anne Hutchinson is shown here at her Massachusetts trial. Puritan leaders, they found her guilty of preaching beliefs that were different from those of the Puritan church. She was forced to leave Massachusetts, and she settled in Rhode Island. So Anne Hutchinson was similar to um, that of um, Roger Williams. So they're two... Um, similar characters, Anne Hutchinson and Roger Williams, because they were both asked to leave because they had differing beliefs than the majority of people of Massachusetts. Okay, now we're going to start talking about the climate and geography of Rhode Island. Rhode Island's climate and geography allowed the colonists to have a strong economy. Narragansett Bay and several rivers, rivers provided fish, transportation, and trade. Animals were trapped for their furs. The colony's forests provided timber. The soil in the southern part of the colony was really good for farming. Winters were sometimes harsh, but summer rains were enough to grow healthy crops. Okay, so as we're reading this again, I want you to think about how are, how's the climate and ge geography of Rhode Island similar to that of Massachusetts? Um, and how is it different? Okay, now the last part of our text that we're going to read Excuse me while I move the camera here for just a moment. We're going to read the last two paragraphs of Rhode Island. Okay? It says, Most colonists in Rhode Island, they were farmers or traders. They raised animals and they grew corn, tobacco, and beans on small farms. Ships from Rhode Island, they carried rum, sugar, wool, and beef to buyers in England and the West Indies, which were the islands in the Caribbean Sea. Some colonists became rich by trading, in Af by trading in African slaves, even though few of them owned slaves themselves. Okay, and then the last part is about the democracy of Rhode Island. So it says, Rhode Island was one of the most democratic colonies. In the early years, all men could vote for the colony's governor and the local officials. But later, only men who owned property could vote. But the voters did not have to belong to a church. So now we know some things, too, that you can help you think about how um, Rhode Island is different than Massachusetts. Think about how, what, how the men were able to vote in Massachusetts. You know, what were they able to do? And how are they similar or different to what the Rhode Island people were able to do? Okay? All right. So your assignment is going to be some questions on Rhode Island, but then also comparing and contrasting some things about um, Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Okay, so go ahead and get started on your assignment. Good luck. Do your best.